words can't describe how excited we are. What you're looking at is a very clean 1999 GTR V-Spec. Bayside Blue, great condition, 50,000 kilometers. A great original standard car, but nothing to write home about. As good as this car is, this is only a donor for our project. What we're gonna do is send this car back to Nismo Japan for their world famous Clubman race spec conversion. You can think of it as a Nismo factory resto mod for the R34 with its ancestor, Z-Tune, as the blueprint. After a long journey, the car arrives in Japan and then directly to a Mori factory. Sadly, Nismo doesn't allow any filming, so we can't send in our video crew. We can only show you pictures from various stages. The concept of the CRS is a car that you can enjoy on the racetrack, and then you can also drive it home. With any major restoration, the first step, of course, is to strip out everything. The bare chassis is then sent to the paint shop. Customers can choose any color they like for the CRS project. For our car, we have decided to stick with the original Bayside Blue, given it is such an iconic color for the R34. Now, to the heart of the beast. A brand new R2 engine is being assembled inside Nismo's engine room. Satisfying to see all new components coming together. Before going back into the car, the engine is being run in on the dyno first, plus making sure the performance meets Nismo's standards. Right on the mark, this powerhouse is making 450 horses and 350 pound foot of torque. Chassis and body panels have been painted and the fun part begins putting everything back together. The engine is finally back in where it belongs. What a masterpiece. The custom made interior is also ready. Nismo then puts the car on a hub dyno to further check if the engine and drivetrain are working in harmony as they should. After almost a year of hard work, the car is finally finished. And you probably think that it is ready for delivery, right? No, not yet. Not by Nismo's super high standard. The car has to be shaken down to make certain everything is A-OK. -okay. Can you guess where we are heading next? Yes, Fuji Speedway, here we are. 
It is around an hour and a half away from Amori Factory, which isn't bad at all. It has hosted a few Formula One races over the years, and it has a super long front straight of almost 1.5 kilometers. The perfect place to shake down and test the R2 engine. And what a glorious day that we have picked, too. It's such a blessing. So the car arrives, and oh my god! The Bayside Blue plus Z-Tune body kit finally reveals itself under the sun. Let's take a minute to appreciate what Nismo has created. It is meant to be a machine to devour the racetrack, but you can also call it an art piece. We can spend hours just looking at it. We love how meticulous Nismo gets when they are building complete cars. Engine has had a standalone dyno, then a four-wheel hub dyno with the chassis, and that's not even good enough. Car has to be shaken down on the racetrack. The thing is, with any resto mod, the end product would have some minor flaws here and there. Not Nismo, not our CRS. It is the Japanese way to make everything right before delivery. The engine has already been run in on the dyno, so now Nismo's very own tester, Sasaki-san, can push the revs. He told us he's looking for any vibration from the drivetrain or anywhere else that he can notice. A general check of noise and vibration for a total of about eight laps, where he pushes only on the straight at high speed and high rev, and then goes gently on the corners. And yes, the test is an utter success, and Nismo can finally sign off on our car. Hats off to their hard work and dedication. Next up, the car can finally head home and back to our shop. The first thing we want to do is have a much closer look at their work. Words simply don't do any justice. The underside of the car is as amazing as the exterior. Beautiful carbon fiber front undercover with a wooden splitter. Every component is brand new. Of course, wherever possible, you will see Nismo upgraded items. The utterly gorgeous any one titanium exhaust is an art piece on its own. Olin suspension, specially developed for Nismo, and now this car wears the R35 GTR Brembo brakes, front and rear. You have to remember, Nismo is the motorsport subsidiary of Nissan. Everything is so clean, looks so factory made with years of R&D behind it. Look at this engine bay, it is sickening neat. The carbon fiber airbox and intake are perfect sculptures. That beefy titanium tower bar dominating the scenery. And of course, the R2 engine itself. It looks as good as it goes. Magnificent.
We haven't mentioned much about the interior. The standard CRS option is to usually get some Recaro bucket seats and a Nardi steering wheel. From the start, we wanted to make our car just a bit more special. So at a much greater cost, we've asked Nismo to bespoke a Z-Tune replica interior for us. As you all know, the Z-Tune inserts are in red. But for our Bayside blue car, we figured an all black interior would be more appropriate. What do you think? You love our color choice for the trims? And you have probably noticed by now, there is a Z-Tune right next to the CRS. Of course, the Z-Tune is the granddaddy of all GTRs, and most CRS upgrades are originated from this car. I bet you all have been waiting for this moment, as we are going to test the CRS ourselves for the very first time. Why not also take our Z-Tune out for a back-to-back -back comparison? This Z-Tune was made in 2005, and this CRS was made in 2021. 16 years apart, but built by the same experts inside Amori. How would they compare? Let me get this off my chest first. A few months ago in Thailand, a Z-Tune sold for 2 million US dollars. Yes, 2 million. The price is through the roof. And today, I get to drive one. I better be careful not to bin it. I'm not gonna lie, but as you all probably know, a stock R34 with just 280 horses is a bit of a pick drive. It's a bit heavy, it's a bit clumsy, and just a bit slow. On the contrary, what makes this Z-Tune so legendary is the Nismo Z2 engine, putting out 500 horses. Yes, cars today have way more horsepower than this, but it is in the delivery of those horses. The ridiculous surge of power and torque. Your back gets pinned to the seat. It's awesome, truly awesome. You don't get this kind of exhilaration in modern engines. It's utterly astonishing. The engine is great, but the ride in the Z-Tune is pretty harsh. I don't know if you can see with the image stabilization, but the camera is shaking. This is one rough ride. It feels like a brick on a dirt road. It makes it hard to put down that massive power. And the brakes, yes, they are super bitey and super effective, but it just feels like an on-off switch. It's like nothing, nothing, and then you get halfway and you get full braking. It's not so easy to do heel and toe. You have to be super delicate and tiptoeing almost, just trying to find that bite point for the right amount of pressure. It's not easy and it certainly isn't forgiving. If anything, this car should belong to the track. It should be doing laps at the Fuji Speedway. You can really tell that Nismo were trying to build a circuit weapon for lap times, as opposed to for driving on those country roads. The chassis is so stiff because they've done spot welds and carbon fiber reinforcements. The sag suspension was especially tuned for semi-slick rubber. The brakes are meant for harsh use and harsh use only. It's too bad we couldn't test this on the track as for sure this will feel fantastic on a silky smooth circuit. So, it's time to jump into the new car. Let's see how the CRS performs, shall we? Five minutes into the drive, and I can already tell that the ride is much better. Whereas the Z-Tune is clearly meant for the track, the Nismo-tuned Olins in this one makes for a much more supple ride, and it's a lot easier to push on the road because it just gives you that much more confidence. And this could totally be an everyday car. You could even put your kids into the back seat for the school run. It is that much better. This R2 engine puts out 450 horses compared to the Z2's 500. Now, if you push it, it's still damn quick, but 
it just lacks that brutal devastation hyperspace turbo kick that you get from the Z2. But the power is definitely more linear and it comes in earlier in the rev range. It makes it much more drivable on the street. You still have to use a few revs to get the car going, but this is one great power plant. And with Nismo having released the R3 and R4 engines, which are supposedly a further improvement, I just cannot wait to try them. Come to think of it, this RB26 DET -T engine is 33 years old, and yet Nismo are still hard at work fine tuning it. And when you put it into that muscular silhouette that is the R34 GTR, it's just a dream come true. And with this sort of combination of engineering and passion, this car should be celebrated and respected. The brakes are also an improvement. Since this car uses the R35 brakes, the pedal is much easier to modulate, and you still get that massive stopping power. As shown on the track, they will not overheat, even under extreme use. So it certainly complements the car as a complete package. What Nismo has done to the CRS is to make it a lot more usable and enjoyable. Technology has advanced so much in the last 18 years that they have just refined it further and further to make it a lot more drivable. They totally achieved what they wanted this car to be. Go crazy on the track, storm around your favorite country roads, and then go for a night cruise with your mates. This is a complete Nismo car at its finest. Now, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. As of this moment, Nismo has only built seven R34 CRS for their customers. So yes, what you're looking at is number seven. The CRS program is of course not confined to a limited production number, but the fact is Nismo is ultra busy with their customers' projects. If you wanna buy a CRS today, the next build slot is 2024. Plus one year of construction and testing. The soonest you'll drive your new CRS will be 2025. That is a three year waiting period. As you know, there are 19 Z-Tunes for the public. And at Nismo's current pace, we think they can at most produce two to three R34 CRS per year. So by 2024, you're looking at 19 Z-Tunes and at most 16 R34 CRS. Why 2024, you ask? That is the year when a 1999 R34 Skyline GTR, like ours, can be legally imported into the US, which opens up a whole new market. And with only 35 Ultimate R34s to go around for the worldwide GTR collectors, not only is the CRS a great car to drive, it poses as one of the safest car investments just because of the limited numbers. Half a million dollars is a lot of money, but the Z-Tune is four times that at two million dollars. So can you even call the CRS a bargain? Essentially, it is an R34 resto mod done by Nissan's motorsport department with their continuous R&D and improvements over the last two decades. It is the ultimate machine for the users and also the smartest investment for speculators. For us, it has been a long wait and a lot of money spent but we can tell you now it was well worth it. Thank you, Nismo, for making such an astonishing machine.